hey guys and welcome back to my channel it's ijoma here and we're going to make this dress today and this is a long video the part one is even 22 minutes but we are going to do it guys now this is the fabric that i'll be using initially this is not the fabric i wanted to use but i lost the fabric i bought in the market i bought a fabric even the design for the sleeve and i lost it now you start with your chest line bust point half length hip line and when i got to the hip line i realized that this fabric was not enough so i had to add extra paper to it because this gown is a three-quarter gown so just go ahead and add your paper use the masking tape to glue the two of them together because if you're making this type of dress i don't think you find a paper like a regular paper that will be enough for the full length if you want to make it a three-quarter dress or a long dress now after doing that i'll go ahead and mark the full length of my gown and this for this gown i want to make the full length 45 inches so i went ahead to mark 45 inches and after marking the 45 inches i'll go ahead and mark a straight line there and then i'll cut off so this particular paper that i have will accommodate both my front and my back pattern because i am not big like i am a slim person so after marking the full length i'll mark a straight line after marking that straight line I'll go ahead and rule other lines, my chest line, bust point, half length, and hip line also. Now, I am done. The first thing is to mark out my shoulder for the front. My shoulder is 15. That is 7.5 on fold. And for the neckline, you know, if you check this dress, the neckline is a a v neckline the front neckline is a v neckline but the back neckline will be a normal neckline so the width of the neckline is 3.5 i made it 3.5 so that the v neckline will be wide enough now after doing that i'll go ahead and mark one inch for my shoulder slant after doing that the the neckline i want it to stop at my chest line my chest line is eight inches so i want this neckline to stop at my eight inches so i'm at eight inches at my chest line so i marked a v-neck from my neckline from my neckline that is the shoulder line down to my chest line now i'm trying to divide this paper into two so that i can keep the other one for the back my hip is 42 but i marked 44 like 44 divided by 4 that is 11 and that will accommodate all my measurements so if you want to divide your paper you will divide it with your hip measurement because your hip measurement is the biggest measurement of your body so i divided my hip by 4 and i marked the straight line then after marking the straight line i will divide this paper into two then i'll keep the rest for the back now like i said i don't know if i've mentioned this before i am not adding any darts to this dress like i'm not using any normal darts to it the only darts that i will use at the front is a bust dart so after doing this just go ahead and take your bust measurement divided by four your waist measurement divided by four your hip measurement divided by four and when you get to your full length you will take out 1.5 inch from whatever you have at your hip unfold or then you will mark so i'm trying to label these lines so that we will not get confused you, you can see my chest line my bust point my half length my hip line right now after doing that the next thing that we are going to do is to take the body measurements without marking that i told you guys that i'm not adding any that if you check the picture of this dress very well you realize that there is no that there is no that you cannot see any line at the front of that dress now i've divided my bust by four i've divided my waist by four i've divided my hip by four and at the full length i marked 11.5 at the hip at the full length i marked 9.5 or even 10 you can take out 1.5 or 2 inches from whatever you marked at your hip and then you will connect so now this one is my armhole it will have a normal armhole i hope we can understand what i am doing right here so after doing this you connect your straight line now after marking this straight line i will cut out this pattern and this is what i'll be using for my front we are still coming to the slash and spread part but for now this is the major thing you need without any that then after cutting this out the next thing that i'm going to do is to use this paper to draft my back i will use this paper to draft my 
back measurements so already i left a paper for it so i'll get the paper i'll place this front on it and then i'll get my back measurements and for this back also i am not adding any that maybe because i am slim but i can sew my dresses without back that especially i can use that on my front but for my back most of the time i don't use that for my back so the only manipulation that i would do there is around the waist area of the back like around the center back i would take out one inch from my zipper allowance so that it will fit very well at the back but i have a way of sewing my clothes without that at the back but if you're a curvy person you may need that i hope you understand so i added 1.5 inch allowance for my zipper then the side remains the same because i'm transferring the front measurements to the back measurements and like i said i'm not adding any that so after indicating all my measurements i'll go ahead and cut another difference between the front and the back is the neckline you know i told you guys that the front neckline is a v neckline while the back neckline is a normal high neck round neckline so i'll go ahead and cut out after cutting this out, I'll also mark my shoulder slants and then I'll keep the front paper aside. I hope we understand. Now, the next thing that we are going to do right here is to take out one point, one inch from our waistline around the zipper. So let me continue with my neckline. My neckline, I'm marking three by three point five by two. I told you guys that the back will have a high neckline. Because if you make it a, a wide neckline, it may affect the front. The front neckline may be falling off your shoulder. So in order to keep that front neckline in place, you have to use a high neck so that you can keep your front neckline in place. Then at the waistline from the center back, I came in by one inch. This is for my zipper intake so that my zipper will not be bulging at the back. This particular method is very important. It helps to eliminate zipper bulge. I hope we understand. So now I will shade that area. After shading that area, I'll go ahead and cut. Uh, if you want also, you can take out one inch, one inch around this half length area. Like you take out one inch from the skirt area and one inch from the but this area that is from the back hole so that it's relaxed very well but this dress does not have any half length so let me just leave it now i will come down by three inches from my boss point and that is my under boss my under boss is 13 so my boss point is 10 three inches below my boss point will be my under boss then this one will be my half length now i will get my dart line at the boss point i got my dart line and at the side i came down by 1.5 inch so i am using 1.5 inch for my bust that i came down by 1.5 inch you can even make it two inches so that the bust area will relax very well so we will close this on paper but not now we'll still close it so the first thing you're going to do is to get your dart line before marking this then from the center of this paper i came in by half an inch and from that half an inch, I came in by half an inch again at the bust point, coming by half an inch at the chest line, coming by half an inch at the bust point. Then from there, you will curve. It will give you this corset look. You understand what I did? Coming by half an inch at your chest line, half an inch at your bust point, then you are going to connect. I hope we understand what I mean now. So this half an inch, if you open it up, it will be one inch, right? This is half an inch on paper. If you cut it on fold and open it up, it will be one inch. So it will serve as the distance between the two um but two breasts. I don't know if how to explain that. Now I will start marking my lines for my slash and spread. And you can see how I'm marking this line. So this third line, make sure that it crosses that your boss point area. That's your dart line. You can see this line now. It's crossed that's my dart line so now i'll go ahead and close these dots i want to close these dots right now i'm trying to like make it easy for myself so after slashing it i'll go ahead and close it that i'll use a masking tape to hold it down So now after holding it down, the next thing that I'm going to do is to continue marking my lines. You go ahead and mark like 
five lines around there or four lines and you can see that the lines are curved so this is the lines that we spread so that i can get my pleats around that bust area now the next thing that i'm going to do is to slash these lines but for now let me leave this i want to cut my normal fabric before doing this one i'm trying to manage my fabric i used two years but if you don't want to run out of fabric you buy two and a half or three yards like i told you guys i lost the fabric i got for this in the market i'll still go and look for it but i have to continue with this fabric i have and this one is two inches and for the designer the sleeve i will use organza for it we have a way of doing that with organza so i'll use organza for it i'll also show you guys how i did that now as you are cutting you'll be adding one inch seam allowance around the bust area this curve you add half an inch you can see how i'm adding half an inch and you also add half an inch or one inch at the top for folding now after doing that this is what i have so if i open it up you can see what it looks like so this is what it looks like if you open it up i'll go and keep i'll go ahead and keep that one aside i'll also cut out the back part and like i said i'm not adding any darts to the back but if you want to add that it is up to you so i'll fold and then i'll go ahead and cut out my back and as you are cutting this back please at the full length of your dress remember to add two inches for hemming you know we are going to hem or fold the full length of this dress so at that full length remember to add two inches for hemming and as you are cutting remember to add one inch or half an inch for your seam allowance so for this back neckline i will cut out a facing for the front neckline also i'll cut out a facing i want to use facing but if you want to sew this dress with a lining you can go ahead and sew it with a lining it's okay it's even be better thicker and neater i don't know how to explain it but then if you use a lining to turn this dress it should look so nice by the way the picture in the the, the fabric in the original picture is a thick duchess it is a thick duchess fabric now i am done cutting the front and the back i'll go ahead and cut out one sleeve for now because i'm managing this fabric so i'll cut out one sleeve for now later i'll cut out the remaining part of the sleeve so the sleeve is just a basic sleeve a basic long sleeve so i'll go ahead and mark my measurements the full length of this sleeve should be 24 but i want to make my 26 that is including the folding allowance the hemming allowance so you can see what i'm doing right now i'll take my sleeve round sleeve measurements and after doing that i'll connect the lines and then i'll cut out so after cutting this out that is it for the sleeve now it is time to slash this paper it is time to slash and spread this paper so i'll go ahead and uh, we get the right side of this fabric now i'll start slashing please do not slash until your fabric is ready so that you will not lose the pieces and always remember to number your your paper your pieces it is important because if they should rearrange you know how to arrange them if they should scatter you know how to rearrange them so now as you are spreading this you see that boss points line make sure that the boss points lines are equal like they are facing each other so you can see i'm making sure that my that boss points lines are still aligning even when folding it on fabric make sure that that boss points line is aligning the fan around here was really disturbing me so you can see how i was struggling to arrange this paper but as you are doing this make sure that your boss points lines align so now i think it's okay i'll go ahead and cut i'm still arranging that boss points line make sure that the boss points line or the chest line are still aligning you can see that the lines are still showing on that paper so go ahead and arrange those lines then you add like one inch or half an inch at the down part then you cut out the side now also add half an inch around the neckline you know we have a v neckline there add half inch around the v, v neckline and add half inch around the armhole area so using this particular one i'll go ahead and cut out another one for now i cut only one so you can see how I'm, i will pleat it then another thing that i forgot to tell you guys is that if you are before you cut out that slash and spread 
before you start slashing that area repli replicate it like cut it out on another paper before you slash that one you are holding so that when you are pleating this area you will have a paper to know when you have gotten the shape you want i hope you understand so this is what i meant you can see i did i forgot to do this but i'm trying to do it now i'll go ahead and arrange this my paper the way it was before i slashed it after arranging it i will cut out a paper that looks like this one that i have right here So after cutting this paper, you can see that that paper is in one piece. You will keep it aside, like you keep this paper, so that anytime you are pleating, that paper will serve as a guide. So you do it before you slash and spread that paper that you are holding. So you can see how I am folding, how I am pleating. So as you are pleating, that paper will be serving as a guide, so that you will know when you have gotten the shape of the pleats that you want. Now we'll continue. I'll keep this paper aside and I'll cut out the second side of this fabric that I am holding right now. So I am done cutting. The next thing that I'm going to do is to cut out the remaining sleeve. You know, I, I cut only one part of the sleeve before i stop so i'll go ahead and cut out the remaining sleeve after cutting out this remaining sleeve i will cut out the belt or the bow around the shoulder if you look at that dress you will see something that looks like a bow around the shoulder right yes so after cutting that out you also cut out your face and i'm cutting out my facing for this slash and spread pieces that i have i will use facing to turn my v neckline so you can see my v neckline i will arrange them and then i'll place the facing according to how i'm going to sew it so if you place your facing please remember to pin it down it is important so I'll place my facing. This is where I'll run a stitch. I'll place the other facing. Then I'll pin it down so that they will not fall off. Now I'll go ahead and use it to turn my neckline. This one is for the bow that will drop around the shoulder. I'll go ahead and cut out another bow for the other side. Like if you look at that dress, there's this fabric that was dropping around the shoulder. This is what you are going to use for it. So the width should be... 3.5 on fold so that after after shaping it it will be three inches it should be 3.5 on fold then the full length should be around 20 inches that would be enough so the first one was longer i had to reduce it so this is what we are going to use for it i'll also keep that aside the next thing that we are going to cut out is the facing of the back of this dress i want to use facing for the back of the dress so you can just go ahead and cut out the facing for the back of the dress so this is the facing for the back of the dress i'll keep it aside now i have turned this front neckline with the facing and this is what i have i have turned the v neckline only the v part i have turned it with a facing so right now we'll start splitting this pleating part may take time, but as you are pleating, be keeping, be pinning it down. It is important. So I couldn't finish this video in, in one video. Like I couldn't finish this tutorial in one video because the tutorial is long and then we are having light issues. Oh my God, electricity is really a problem. So now after pinning, as you are pinning, after pinning the down part, first of all, you will now arrange the shoulder. You will pleat the down first of all like the underboss area you will pleat it first of all and then after doing that you please the shoulder area if you have any excess you can go ahead and trim so you can see as i'm doing this i'm still cross checking with my paper to know if i've gotten what i want so if i place my paper i think it is okay now though my allowance reduced a bit but i think it's okay now then i'll go ahead and retrim my armhole so 
So as you are trimming, be pinning. Make sure that this pin is there. The pinning is really important. So after trimming this, I'll run a stitch to hold my pleats together. Like I'll run a stitch at the armhole area, and I'll also run a stitch around the underboss area. So I am done with that part. I'll continue with the second part. So let me just try it on. Yes. Yeah, so it is giving me what I want. I'll go ahead and pleat the other one the same way. So after pinning this one, I will arrange the underboss very well and this is what we have. So let me go ahead and place it here and it is okay. And the side that is also in place. So guys, this is where we are going to stop. In the next video, we will do the sleeve and everything. Bye!